You wouldn't think that a bustling port that accounts for approximately 20% of all cargo coming into the U.S would also be the home to one of the most unique prisons in the federal system, surrounded by ships coming from all over the world. You would have one of the most interesting views as you peer out the prison window, hearing the sounds of seals barking in the distance. With a rich history of infamous criminals and scandals, FCI Terminal Island will be our first low security federal prison profile. Let's get into it. We'll cover notable inmates and scandals at the facility, but first let's check some stats for the prison. The facility is located on Terminal Island in Los Angeles County, California. Prior to the name Terminal Island, it was called Rattlesnake Island, which changed in 1891. The island was built up over the years and is now largely artificial, the majority of which is occupied by the Port of Los Angeles and the Port of Long Beach. Land use for the island is entirely industrial except for the prison. The island is connected by four bridges with the distinctive green Vincent Thomas Bridge. The fourth longest suspension bridge in California connects the island to the neighborhood of San Pedro, where the prison is technically located. San Pedro started as a working class city dominated by the fishing industry. It is now a gentrifying community. San Pedro is one of the older settlements in North America and was part of Rancho San Pedro, a massive land grant once ruled by the Spanish crown. San Pedro was consolidated with Los Angeles in 1908. It has a population of 86,000 residents. The area offers an urban city with a suburban feel with an average home price of over $600,000. It's not exactly cheap. Located on a very small portion of Terminal Island is FCI Terminal Island. This is not an imposing penitentiary like we have explored previously, but rather a hardly noticeable blip on the map. FCI Terminal Island officially opened its doors to its first inmates on June 1, 1938. It cost the federal government $2 million to construct, which is about $42 million today. Originally, the facility consisted of three housing units surrounding a quadrangle and was a low-medium facility. At first, the facility changed hands several times. The U.S. Navy operated the facility during World War II for court-martialed sailors. California would take over the prison in 1950, before it returned to federal jurisdiction in 1955. Female inmates were also held at the prison until their transfer to FCI Dublin in 1977. The facility was designed to hold 1,194 offenders, but the average daily population in 2021 hovered around 750 offenders. The population has since slowly crept back up. As of January 2023, it was housing 1,004 offenders. The average length of stay at FCI Terminal Island is 72 months, or 6 years. Today, the federal government classifies the facility as a low-level prison, and now has a mix of dormitory and multi-occupancy housing units. It has no single cell housing units. FCI Terminal Island has a small number, 78, of segregation cells used for administrative, disciplinary, and protective custody. The prison has 276 staff that may have contact with inmates. Terminal Island is classified as a care level three institution, which means its population includes inmates with chronic care needs and inmates requiring specialized medical or mental health care. Nearly 15% of the inmates are 60 or older, the average for the federal prison system is just under 7%. The older and more medical dependent population was especially susceptible to COVID-19, which took a heavy toll at FCI Terminal Island. The news media pounced on reports coming out of the facility of high infection rates and death. 10 inmates died at the prison of COVID-19, with 70% of the general population tested positive for COVID. It was the third deadliest prison in the federal prison system for COVID-19. A report by the government found that staff at Terminal Island also failed to notify families of deaths. The families were finding out about a death of a loved one from the news media. Terminal Island was also one of the first prisons to institute mass testing. Instead of letting an offender know about the result immediately, they waited until all tests were returned. Staff feared that positive inmates may be assaulted and hurt by other offenders. In February 2019, it was revealed that during one of the coldest periods in the area in decades, the heat at the prison stopped working. BOP officials said, Staff discovered that an underground steam line that provides heat to two housing units had collapsed, leaving those two units without heat. They also said, Inmates who requested extra blankets were provided them. It wasn't until nearly a month later with no repairs were inmates transferred to FCC Victorville. I'm not sure what's worse, the cold or the violence at Victorville. The facility had gained a reputation in the 1980s as a soft federal prison with tennis courts meant for those convicted of white-collar crimes. During that same time, a series of scandals would rock the facility. 
Charles DeSorti, a lieutenant at the facility, would be convicted for his role in concealing crimes at the prison. The indictment started with nine counts to include distributing drugs and stealing offender money, but he would only be convicted of two counts. He would receive a shockingly light sentence of 60 days in jail with three years suspended. The federal prosecutor would say, This is just ludicrous. I don't even consider it a slap on the wrist. It was an inappropriate sentence given the seriousness of the crimes involved. At the time, DeSorti was the highest ranking prison official ever convicted of corruption in the federal prison system. Although it doesn't appear there have been any recent arrests for staff smuggling contraband, Luis Borjan pled guilty to a bribery charge in 2014 after smuggling a cell phone into the prison for $1,000. It was found that he was approaching offenders to offer them his smuggling services. Before we move on to some notable inmates at the facility, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos. The facility is housed some of the most infamous gangsters and mobsters of all time, such as Al Capone, Henry Hill, and Salvatore Bonanno. Even Charles Manson was housed here for a short time. We're going to look at a couple of current inmates that are housed here. Although this is a non-political channel, these two are especially contentious given the current political climate. Michael Avenatti, lawyer for Stormy Daniels, attempted to take on then-President Donald Trump. This would put him in the spotlight and would start his path toward crime. He would commit multiple crimes from 2018 to 2020. Avenatti would be convicted of attempting to extort millions of dollars from Nike and various other frauds, including one from his once client, Stormy Daniels. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison on December 5th, 2022. The Bureau of Prisons has its expected release date of January 27th, 2026, which may not account for his recent sentence. Our next infamous inmate is also of a contentious political nature. Christian Secor pled guilty in federal court to one count of obstructing a federal proceeding for his involvement in the breach of the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. He would be arrested on February 16, 2021, after a video service showing him entering the Senate chamber and sitting in the vice president's seat. The criminal complaint also noted that he climbed the scaffolding to the Upper West Terrace of the building and made his way into the Capitol using the Senate wing door. He was sentenced to 42 months in prison and is serving his time at FCI Terminal Island. He has an estimated release date of October 13th, 2025. These are just a couple of examples of the over 1,000 inmates at FCI Terminal Island. Each of them have their own story that landed them at this prison. We have now taken a look at FCI Terminal Island. Over the time it has existed, it has had its fair share of infamous inmates. This is a low-level prison and doesn't experience the violence other higher security institutions do. Let me know your thoughts on this port prison in the comments. Also, be sure to check out my federal prison playlist by clicking here. As always, see you next time.